Hi. So today we're going to be looking at the CoffeeScript SAS and less uh, alternatives to writing JavaScript in CSS. So the first thing you need before you get started is the Visual Studio extension to enable this. So that's the Mindscape Web Workbench. Installing this will basically hook those uh, three utilities into Visual Studio, give you um, syntax highlighting and things like that. Alright, so what we're going to do is create a new web application. Okay, ASP.NET Web App. So we'll go create it. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'll start off with the coffee script. So I'll go right click add, new item. Scroll down, we'll see a new uh, work, uh, new item type called coffee script file. I'll just call that main.coffee. Alright, so coffee script is an abstraction to JavaScript. So think of it as a high level programming language for that compiles into JavaScript. So here is some sample code here. So we've got a variable called outer. We're going to set that to be equal to one. We're going to have a function called change numbers that will set a variable inner to be minus one, outer to be 10. And we're going to declare a variable inner, which is going to be the result. Uh, I'm going to call function inner, which is going to be change numbers. So if I save this, so what that will do in the background is compile that into JavaScript. So what we can see here when we browse to the Solution Explorer is it's generated main.js. We just drag that across so we can compare the two files. All right, so we've got 10 lines of code versus five lines of code. So you can see here, we've picked, he's picked up the variables, change numbers, inner and outer. We set outer equals one. Change number is equal to this function here, and that returns outer. So inner is then equal to the result of change numbers. Okay, so that's nice and handy to have. And if you look at the CoffeeScript website, there's heaps of samples about working with CoffeeScript. Okay, next up is SAS. So SAS is the same sort of thing, but for CSS. So again, we go create a new item. We'll go SAS style sheet and call that main. All right, so for this one, I'll drag that in. What we can see here is actual nested CSS queries. So we've got this UL nested under navbar. We've got the anchor tag nested under li, which is nested under navbar. So traditionally, when you do CSS, uh, you'd actually have to specify a new CSS class for each of these ones here. So that one there would actually be navbar space li space a font weight bold on a separate line. So if we save that, again, it generates or compiles to CSS. We'll just drag that across. Format that a bit nicer. So there you go. So that nested line I was talking to you about before is its own CSS class, whereas here it's nested under the li element, which is under the navbar element. So this gives your CSS file nice structure. Okay, so that all the styles associated to anything inside the navbar sit inside this navbar class, rather than uh, that four classes here that define elements in the navbar. All right. Okay, so last is less which is also a, a layer on top of CSS, but it works slightly differently than CoffeeScript and SAS. So let's go ahead and create that less uh, CSS file. Um, we'll just call that main2. Okay, we'll delete that. So less is slightly more powerful in that it turns CSS into its own programming language. So you can define variables, you can do calculations on the variables, you can define classes and things like that. So here we've got three variables dis defined. So the border width, which is one pixel, we've got a base color, and we've got a definition of red. So if you can treat this as like your corporate colors, so our corporate red is defined by this 
x value here. Uh, so we can make reference to those variables in our CSS. So background color red, uh, color is base color plus some things here. The border color is a variant of red, so desaturate red by 10%. And the border of the header on the right is going to be two times the variable of the border. Okay, so it's pretty powerful what it does. So if I go ahead and save that, you'll see in the Solution Explorer that doesn't actually generate a CSS file for us. Um, what we actually do need is another JavaScript file to support this less um, file. And what we'll need to do is include that on our site. So I'll add that to uh, the master page. So we're referencing the main less file and then we're going to reference the less JavaScript file. Okay, so what that will do is it'll look at the less file and then compile it on the client side to CSS. So if I run that, we should see our nice default header being red instead of blue. There we go. And if I actually pop open the developer console, you can see here that on the client side, less parsed main 2.less and it generated CSS in 58 milliseconds. Okay, if we actually try and look at the class definition, so it's the header. This is from the less file. So you can remember the border left and the border right was two times. And this is our red variable here. And it's basically like some generic file here. So it's generated on the fly on the client side. So that's just something to be aware of. All right, so that wraps up our introduction to CoffeeScript, uh, SAS, and less. Thanks.